Hi everyone, so welcome to Investing for Value. So today we've got a stock on demand, Carnival Cruises, also known as Carnival. So the stock price is currently trading at $42.20, um, but it's actually dropped it from a few days ago of $45. Um, and the stock a year ago used to be as high as $60, and two years ago it used to be as high as $72. Um, so this stock has kind of been dropping as it goes. But even though it's been dropping quite a bit, it's still a $30 billion giant. Um, so these these guys run a big, big operation, as we'll see with the numbers soon. Um, so they currently have 104 ships, which is, you know, quite a, quite impressive. Because you imagine how large, you know, these cruise liners are. Um, they are massive things. So... We look at 2017 revenue numbers, and it was at 17.5 billion, jumping to 18.8 .8 billion in 2018. So that was a 7.4% increase in revenue, uh, which isn't too bad if you're, you know, such a large player. Um, but then we look at the 2008 numbers, and it was 18.8, .8, then jumping to 20.8. Um, so last year it did really well because revenues jumped 10.6%. Though we're about to find out, you know, how they did it. Because net profits, we can look at 2017, 2.6 billion, and then it jumped to 3.15 billion. Uh, but then we look at last year, and it actually fell to 2.99 billion. So you'd likely go, these guys were chasing more growth, so they kind of sacrificed profits to chase growth. Um, which a lot of companies will do if they kind of see even an opportunity to improve their market share um, so as we look at these numbers here on terms of like the traveling well we can go 2017 um, they had 12.1 million passengers 2018 12.4 million passengers so they've been increasing the amount of passengers they've been carrying every year uh, last year was 12.9 million passengers which is quite good because you imagine a company that's you know getting more customers as you go um you know what well, it's a good sign um but it could also like if we look at the wider picture though like if a company is doing quite well why are they having to spend a bit more money trying to chase growth well the one thing that's actually been showing is they've actually been losing market share so like we look at the global amount of people traveling into cruise ships um, and this was, in 2017 it was 26 million and it went to 28 and a half then 30 million last year that traveled on cruises um, so we look at the carnival's market share as they have gone they went from 45.3 to 42.8 percent so like it's not a massive drop but it's still a drop like every year they've managed to lose market share which is not necessarily something that gives you confidence, you know. Um, though it's still not too bad because these guys have still managed to keep their net profits on a quite a, you know, consistent amount close to the three billion mark. Um, so like, if you look at this company, it's not too bad in terms of like if they if they didn't grow anymore, um, they're still generating a good net profit. They pay a dividends of two dollars last year um so on a yeah like on a share price of 42 dollars um you're getting about a four you know just just about the four percent yield which isn't bad like if you look at most stocks uh, most stocks aren't giving you that yield so um is it a good time to buy because you'll be like oh this stock's giving you a really good dividend yield compared to other dividends but the problem is, if you get a two dollar dividend yield, but your price stock price drops more than two dollars, well, that's kind of bad math, right? Um, so we kind of have to look at the wider picture. Um, while well, these guys they forecast this quarter from December all the way to February uh, that their net, their revenue would rise by four to six percent, which is kind of good. Um, though when you look at this, it's kind of like slowing down unless you know like they quicken up the pace um throughout the other other parts of the year um though net, prof net revenue yield 
uh, was actually going to go down. So even though profits were going to go up, it was the revenue yield was actually going to go down. Um, and they were kind of forecasting that 5% of the capacity where they would dock would be in China. So like if you imagine currently with the coronavirus, um, your plan of 5% has just gone down the drain. Um, and I don't imagine people are that enthused about being stuck on a ship, um, particularly if someone has a coronavirus, which it kind of happened with their ship. Um, they had a massive ship, thousands of people, and someone had coronavirus on there. So what's worse, like being stuck on a ship, nowhere to go, coronavirus, then the ship's being like locked down, um, and in your holiday you know your your amazing holiday trips just being like put into this big lockdown prison um so like it's kind of scary um that you you know you don't want to be stuck on a ship especially with a virus that's really contagious um you know debatable how deadly you know what's more deadly um but it, it it's not not necessarily the best thing you want to like have when you're on your holiday so i'd say like even though like you know price has gone down um i i'm not gonna really encourage buying um like i i know a lot of people you know like are recommending this stock and you know i kind of feel like oh it's not too bad like going from price historically um historically it seems all right because yeah, this stock used to trade at 72 dollars and then sixty dollars, and now forty-two dollars. Um, so it's not a great trend that it's been going down. Um, if if you ask me if this is a immediate buy, I wouldn't say it's a immediate buying opportunity. Like the price is down, um, but I, I kind of sense a bit more weakness within the next three to six months for the stock, particularly when they were seeing like Asia, particularly China, because of the um middle class growing in wealth they kind of saw that as a big opportunity for their growth um but now that's just like a hook line and sinker you know like they do not have this um area they can grow into and most likely they're not going to get many customers from china because firstly um people in china aren't going to be leaving on cruise ships um, and then, then you've got people in Asia which, who are pretty like scared about this. Um, no one wants the virus, so they're not going to want to take that many cruise ships. Um, then this kind of just spreads into a wider kind of fear. Like even though other parts of the world won't be affected by it, um, people aren't going to travel, uh, let alone be stuck on a cruise ship for a long time. Like never mind just being stuck on a plane and then feeling like oh someone might have this virus um if you're stuck in a cruise ship for a whole week you might not and it's particularly cruise ships tend to be like social kind of gatherings people coming in and out so all sorts of things are happening so i wouldn't need to share like i'd say like uh, i'd say they're most likely to l have a much lower amount of like kind of passengers this year, particularly given the coronavirus and all the fear. So I wouldn't. I would kind of see their profits dropping. I'd see their passenger numbers dropping. I'd see their profits dropping. Um, and but the question is how much. Like, it's not a question of like if this will happen. It's a question of how much how much revenue do you revenue will they lose or do they just not grow um they're bound to make some losses because they're gonna have to spend more money on safety precautions and all this they're gonna lose a lot of customers mean meaning some ships that were going to be sailing in china um they're not going to be sailing or they'll be sailing at a loss because you've got people on payroll you can't just take away your overheads you've got maintenance you've got all these things that you have to look after and i'm going to say you know um you can see the stock as a buying opportunity and you can buy a little bit but i wouldn't necessarily recommend buying a lot of it 
I'd say like if you really want it, buy like twenty percent of what originally that you of what you wanted to buy. Um, and I'd say wait for this. Like look at it in three to six months time when the coronavirus is a bit more settled. Um, though mind you, people are still going to be fearful for traveling for the next six to nine months. So I would say like a lot of weakness in this stock for this year. And there's going to be plenty more opportunities to buy. Like, yeah, like $30 billion and a generating, you know, it's a, and it's pretty impressive though. Like they're making about $3 billion, So, you know, it's a, it's a decent 10% um, net profit on, you know, the yield on the current market value. And they kind of pay up to half of it um into dividends which isn't bad um so that's the thing if you buy it for the dividend and you're here for the long run maybe you don't care about the price after that because you'll be like i'm just going to take my dividend um but seeing and you know like the, but and they're probably likely to just keep paying at two dollars just to keep shareholders happy um but i'd say like it's it's pretty difficult to recommend an absolute buy like i i wouldn't like if, if I, I was there for dividends i would say it's all right because what if dividends drops um share price will drop again um so you want to leave yourself a lot of room to average down if you do buy into this because yeah i don't i, I don't know about you but i don't feel like this is the this is like the you know the bottom of this stock in terms of like predicting the bottom like what kind of valuation would i be happy with like i would take it actually to this 2017 um kind of step where i'd go like okay maybe um 10 times this like uh, p of 10 so like maybe I'm, i'd say like at 26 billion maybe um you'd start to get a bit more serious because those num the passenger numbers i'm gonna say they're gonna decrease by quite a lot particularly when over a million of these passengers are from asia um i, I would say it's just best to discount all the passengers from asia and say you've suddenly lost 10 percent of your passengers you've lost 10 percent of your revenues um and potentially 10 percent or more of your net profits which is kind of like how you want to see things how you want to go um is this a company worth buying assuming they lose 10 percent of most of like the passengers revenues net profits and at, at around three billion if you lose 10 percent um yeah you're more about 2.7 billion um but we kind of have to look at a wider kind of thing and go um is competition going to get tougher particularly with cruise ships because everyone's wanting the only passengers that are willing to travel during this environment um so i'd say you 26 might be the fair value 26 billion will be the fair value um from my perspective um but you're not buying off a margin of safety if you're not buying off a margin of safety you know you're leaving yourself with a lot of risk um, so in terms of margin of safety, I'd say 23 to 20 billion, like if you, in terms of market value, uh, which would m more or less be cutting this uh, share price into a third. So like I think anywhere between 25 to $30 is a pretty good margin of safety. Um, if you feel like you must buy this stock or you really want to just or you're in it for the long run anything under 35 wouldn't necessarily be too bad um but currently at 42 dollars um i think there's still going to be more dropping particularly um the coronavirus situation has not you know it's just the beginning it, it hasn't really settled itself or hasn't even reached its peak yet so we don't know everything and people will be too fearful to travel like even even if we like go um 10 million or 11 people want to travel that's still gonna the numbers are gonna drop um and this company isn't a company you want to hold 
particularly if hey numbers are going to drop if a recession happens uh, it'll be like just your luck you know things didn't go your way um, so in terms of that I'd say if you really want to buy some buy 20% um, but look for under $35 under $35 you get the green light you do what you want um, but right now if you're asking me I'm gonna say I just can't recommend it right now like mm, like I mean it, it's a it's an okay buy it's it's nothing like you're buying this and you're going okay this might be fair value you're here for the dividend um, but if the stock drops then what happens like how many years does it take to recover or does the stock recover because do people want to be on cruise ships after that? Um, probably they probably do. Yeah, they probably do. Um, but it might take a year to recover. Um, so your money, like if you if you're here for a dividend stock and you're gonna be you don't mind being stuck here for two three years, then I say hey that's fine go for it because um, dividends is great while you wait. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to say if. Yeah, if you're there for a dividend, go for that. Forty, forty dollars, whatnot. It's all right. Um, if you're here for the capital gains of the share price, under thirty-five dollars is looking like a really good buying opportunity. Anything under thirty dollars starts to look pretty good. So I'm, um, I'm just gonna say watch the stock. If you can't resist, buy a little. Um, yeah and I'm just going yeah I think that's more or less like I want to give you something really decisive um, but you know like we just don't know about this current situation right now so we have to just see how things go and then um, there's assess it as we go like um, things could turn around the stock could jump and I could just look like oh well, I didn't recommend the stock it's okay like if you miss this opportunity it's fine um, I don't necessarily see the upside being that much of an upside like if the stock goes up it goes back to like $50 which isn't that much of an upside whereas the downside is quite a big downside your upside could be 20% but your downside could be 30% so like that's this bad bad risk reward kind of ratio um, but you do your own decision at the end of the day this is my opinion your opinion could be different um, but you know like I think it's always great to compare different opinions um, hopefully this was helpful uh, if you've got any questions just let me know below or if you've got any um, other stocks you want me to look at um, then let me know um, until then well good luck investing everyone